Hello everyone. Today we will discuss uh, progressive supranuclear palsy. It is also known as uh, steel Richardson Olszewski syndrome. And this is basically a neurodegenerative disease. And it typically presents in the sixth decade of life. And it is characterized as we have already read in the medicine, decreased cognition. Supranuclear vertical gaze palsy. Postural instability and history of frequent falls. And Parkinsonian features. And speech disturbances. Next, very important is the radiological features, right? So, in the radiological features, MR is an investigation of choice, and in MR, very important is you will see midbrain atrophy. Midbrain atrophy. So, in midbrain atrophy, there are different markers. First is the Midbrain to pons area ratio. Midbrain to pons area ratio. Right? So that you have to calculate on the sagittal plane. As you can see, this is a midbrain and this is the pons, and you will calculate the area. Ultimately, we will calculate the ratio. That is a midbrain to pons area ratio. Normally it is around 0.24, but in progressive supranuclear palsy, it is reduced to the 0.12. Okay. In PSP, there are various signs. Very important is the penguin or the hummingbird sign. So, what is penguin or the hummingbird sign? There is basically the flattening or the concave outline. To the superior aspect of the midbrain. Ideally, it should be convex. Ideally, it should be convex. Okay. And you will see here it is a flattening. Here it is a flattening. And the concavity has developed because of the midbrain atrophy. And this is known as the penguin or the hummingbird sign. Right. So, there is one more terminology that is known as morning glory sign. Morning glory sign is basically... Uh, there is loss of the lateral convex margin of the tegmentum of the midbrain. So, tegmentum is very importantly involved in the progressive supranuclear palsy, right? So, in normal, normal individuals, the lateral margin of the tegmentum is convex. Normal individuals, the lateral margin of the tegmentum is convex. And in the supra, in progressive supranuclear palsy, the tegmentum is concave. In one more condition, it is seen. It is a multi-system atrophy. Next, very important is the MR Parkinsonism index. That is MRPI. So, what is MRPI? MRPI basically the it's, it can be calculated by the equation. That is P by M into MCP divided by SCP. So, what is P? It is the area of the pons in the mid-sagittal plane. So, what is M? It is the area of midbrain in mid-sagittal mid plane. Okay. So, what is MCP? It is the width of the middle cerebral 
peduncles right so what is scp it is the average width of the superior cerebellar peduncles okay and uh, in normal individuals it should be less than 13.5 and in mc in progressive supranuclear palsy it is more than 13.5 and now there is a modified version of the mrpi it is known as mrpi 2.0 so what is mrpi 2.0 it is the initial mrpi which we calculated by the p by m into mcp divided by scp ye to ho gaya pehle wala mrpi into v3 divided by the fh so what is v3 v3 is the average width of the third ventricle on the axial images this you have to remember on the axial images at the level of the anterior and the posterior commissure at the level of the anterior and posterior commissures next is fh so what is fh it is the maximal left to right frontal horn width on the axial images on the axial images in acpc plane what is acpc plane it is anterior commissure and the posterior commissure plane okay so next is uh, next very important is the mid brain to pons width ratio this you have to remember this is mid brain to pons width ratio initially we have studied the area ratio this is the width ratio and it is less than 0.52 in the progressive supranuclear palsy and this also you have to calculate on the midline sagittal plane this you have to calculate in the midline sagittal plane right next is a mickey mouse appearance and the mickey mouse appearance is a reduction of the ap midline mid brain diameter less than 12 mm less than 12 mm that we have to calculate at the level of the superior colliculus this you have to calculate at the level of the superior colliculus right and uh, this progressive supranuclear palsy you should differentiate it from the other neurodegenerative diseases so first is the parkinson disease parkinson disease usually spares the midbrain and the superior cerebellar peduncles okay and next is msa that is a multiple system atrophy it predominantly affects the middle cerebral peduncles and the pons and we have already read that is a hot cross bun sign right thank you